Hey everyone, and welcome back to Planet Zoo, and welcome back to another habitat in Yosemite Valley today with the Eurasian Lynx. I have no idea if I pronounced that correctly. Anyhow, uh, you might be surprised now because this obviously is a modded animal. Now, before we start into the video, I might just quickly add that modding is definitely not supported by Frontier officially, um, and this is definitely all at your own risk. So, in case you guys want to use mods, always keep that in mind. If your game breaks or whatever, you cannot actually expect any kind of support from Frontier. Um, modding is not officially supported. Um, however, I uh, still have to say that I, I just you know it's it's definitely time to use mods because they became so insanely good uh, lately the development has been really incredible and um, I think the moment where it was in inevitable to avoid mods is uh, the fact that these animals now are added to the game so they don't replace uh, an animal in the game they really add an animal so there are several new um, mods that do actually support this new feature. They um, come with an addition to the game. With everything in the game, um, you you get the uh, Wikipedia or like the uh, Zoopedia entry. You get the different icons. You get uh, actually the animal, of course, with the juveniles. Um, some even have albinos in, and all these kind of stuff. Uh, fur variants. It's everything in. And with the links, especially over here, um, this is one of the best. I think maybe even the best mod so far. Um, this has been created by uh, Nick. Um, Nicholas Line, uh, Line Rider, and um, he's, he's done an absolutely fantastic job on that one. It's incredible work, um, really looks fantastic. We do see some little problems with some enrichment items, um, which is pretty normal because um, they do use actually the rig of some existing animals, um, but since a few things are changed, like size-wise and stuff like that, it, it does lead sometimes to, to weird animations, but I think you can actually oversee that because most of the animations are spot on, um, and I mean, we even have in-game animals that do also have the same problems with some of the enrichment items so um, I think that's not too big of a deal however um, I think this is just like you know before we talk about this habitat which I will show you in the real-time part in a little bit better um, I, I want to definitely say my opinion about modding I've never really talked about that because um, I, I just find it fair enough for a game um, that the, the game j just really gets the attention that it deserves and I think Planet Zoo is still a fantastic game it's absolutely madness um, what you can create in this game but of course um, you know everyone is always starving for new animals that's that's just how it is that's just what the you know the core of a zoo game is about animals you know um, it's not like and I do give this to the people they said that at the very beginning um, it's not like that you take a wooden coaster and you can just make so many different variants of a wooden coaster um, that's not really the same like with a Bengal tiger for example you know um, you still can go creative and do as many habitat variants Variants as you want but at the very end of the day it's still a Bengal tiger and I mean yes it's also at the end of the day it's a wooden coaster but you can just do so many things about it um, and in this way it's definitely way more needed to have more animals uh, to keep the interest high and to keep um, people um, fed with some new animals and stuff rather than you know in a, in a theme park game where it's actually enough to just have some new stuff every now and then um, that said I really think this game really benefits a lot from the mods because the mods are insane, like most of them, okay? You, you, you know, um, I'm not going to give you all the info, but you have to check yourself, but... Um it's definitely uh, a very good thing to go to Nexus mods and uh, just check the uh, yeah mods yourself. Um, some of which are incredible, some of them are okay. I've not really seen a bad one at all. They're all very good mods indeed. Um, but you have to decide for your uh, on your own. Some of them have some issues with animations and stuff simply because they um, change the rig quite a lot. Um, but just all in all, it is uh, a fantastic thing to have. And I really do hope that with using mods, we bring more people back into to the Planet Zoo game because um, obviously um, I really hope that Frontier keeps pushing the limits with new animals such like the Binturong or uh, um, all the new crazy animals from this recent uh, update and also like a DLC I want to say it's an update it's not free um, and also with the new enrichment items because this is the kind of stuff you can't mod and this is the kind of stuff we all love the game for it just always keeps on pushing the boundaries and you know it's really cool to have that and I, yeah, I'm always fully supportive um, of the game because it's a great game, but I'm also, you know, I've seen the work that the models did for such a long time. Um, and, you know, I checked mods out every now and then, but 
I think I just didn't feel it's it's right timing, you know. Um, but I really think it's it's the right time now to to start using mods every now and then. I won't go too crazy in. There's a simple reason for that, and you have to keep that in mind yourself as well. Um, mods have to be updated, which each and every update that Planet Zoo gives out, and um, I think every now and then some bug fixes don't really change much. But every major update, so as the 1.5 update requires a full overhaul of the mod. Um, sometimes it's just a tiny bit. Sometimes it's a bit more work. So you have to keep that in mind because this means that the modders have to be actively updating their mods. So it's really not a given that once you have a mod, you will have it forever. I mean, if you don't update your game, well, fair enough, then you do have it. But at the very end, you don't since you want to update your game, which is just natural. Um, and yeah, that's that's basically where I'm coming from. And this is, this is the story about modding. And I really hope you guys are excited for it because we will do a lot of cool stuff with the mods um, in comparison um, uh, to what we have done in the past already with other things. Um, and also in combination uh, with this great game and the new additions to the game, I think we will be able to create some awesome stuff. And I'm still ho hoping very much that Frontier is going to give us uh, some full marine stuff Stuff in the future and all that kind of things you know I'm really looking forward to the future of Planet Zoo I just think that modding is helping to keep um, the interest in the game high um, as long as possible and then opening doors uh, for new people for new crazy talented you know people uh, that come to the game I really do hope that this is gonna happen anyhow so we talked a long long time now about this uh, let's talk about the habitat um, because I think it's fair enough to speak about this habitat in detail because this is a this is a lynx habitat and i've never i've never done a lynx habitat obviously because well there wasn't a lynx in the game now um they do have quite a large habitat these animals live um, and this is why it's called the eurasian um lynx it's it's living in europe and in asia and you know tendency uh, is a little bit more to the northern hemisphere but they do actually go quite far to the south so they do have a wide span of uh, climate areas even though they tend to be a bit more in the cold side of things um i think it's a maximum of 20 degrees is what they can easily live with um sometimes it might just go over but you know um but they can easily live in also sub zero degrees um celsius temperatures easily enough so they do have some uh, you know, uh, quite a vi wide range in which they can live. So I opted for a habitat that is only visible from a raised viewing platform um, for once because that was the only way to fit that habitat in. But they, these are also pretty shy animals in nature, but also in zoos. Um, so I wanted to make sure that these animals have a little bit more privacy than the other big cats over here. Um, and I wanted to squeeze that in just in between where we thought about putting the Bengal tiger in. But I, I think it fits better to have the lynx here. Um, we do have the cheetah on the left hand side and we do have the Siberian tiger on the right hand side which then merged into the snow leopard so I think climate wise um, this is a good decision to have those animals um, close to each other rather than having a Bengal tropical tiger in between um, so I don't think I'm going to bring the Bengal tiger in However, I will do some changes in Yosemite now with the mods. You'll see that in the next coming days. Um, I'm really excited to show you. This is going to be cool. Um, some easy things, you know, and then I'll call it a day. This this park is very close to be done. And then we do have to change uh, a little bit the, the, you know, area or whatever. I do have some new projects in mind. I haven't started on, on one of them. Um, you know that there is the Bob's Farm series running at this very moment in time. Uh, so it would be cool if you guys check this out as well, because that's kind of the trend transition series into something completely new um, but I you know I won't I won't push it I won't stress it I will definitely um, you know have a look into how my life will uh, you know just start being once we kind of uh, you know reached uh, an everyday life with the baby um, you know at, at the moment it's running very well uh, I created this habitat with the baby sleeping next to me uh, and it slept like over four hours uh, calmly and quietly next to me and um, she let daddy build that habitat. That was really lovely. Um, but you know, it's no guarantee. There are so many changes coming every few weeks with the baby. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm really, you know, keeping it easy, simple, relaxed, and I'm not going to push anything here uh, because I have no idea. I don't want to make any wrong promises. Uh, I will definitely change my um, schedule in a way that it is a bit more easy for me to handle. So you will see that in the coming weeks. 
I won't tell you now because I'm not certain how exactly it is. I think the Saturday is potentially the one day that will will remain safe. This is the one day um, that I'm definitely going to try to always have content for you guys. Um, but I have no idea about other games. I can't also tell you when the showcases are returning. They will definitely return um, and they will also definitely now include mods and other kind of stuff. But again, I've got no idea when this is coming, and we also have Prehistoric Kingdom um, on the horizon. And again, I you know I'm not sure how I will fit that in, but you'll see. Another cool thing, obviously, with the 1.5 update, we do have custom billboards, and I used that as well um, in here, and I created my own education signs over here, as you can see. I took some things. That have you uh, you have seen that in many zoos, I guess? Um, they always have pictures of their animals in the zoo, and then they do put the names on, so you know which is the name, and you can have a look for for those animals and you know exactly which is which um, so that's pretty dope and uh, I yeah I just really think that's a great thing to have but yeah now um, if you have a look at this one this is the um, viewing area uh, on top I thought you know we need some more shade and uh, I guess at the very end that was a good idea to have some shade over here and um, create a bit more of a viewing platform but yeah let me show this habitat to you in its full glory now in the real time part it's uh, starting in a couple of seconds so I see you after the cut All right, so here we are in the real-time part. And as you can see, I could finally get the performance back to a level that it is. I mean, I wouldn't say it's decent, but it's okay. You know, we could even make a tour out of that because you can clearly tell that there is still uh, movement going on. You can see the snow blowing. I don't think you really have seen that in um, the timeline as well, but I put some some effects in here. You know, there are some snow effects in there and here and over there, and we have some, some coolers and stuff. So because that's how it would be, well, I don't know if it's that way in real life but we need something that is more realistically uh, creating that snow over here because we are at the moment at least in the summertime area and um, yeah this is how it looks and again I think this is a very fitting habitat if you can see over here I named those two this is Maggie and this is Jacob and uh, we do have this is actually from Wikipedia we can actually have a look over here if you want so you can see the origin links uh, links links <laughs> links uh, not, not right though anyways and um, that's the German dream uh, is a medium-sized wildcat widely spread throughout Eurasia in northern, central, uh, eastern Europe to central Asia and Siberia, which fits very well with the Siberian tiger. The Tibetan, uh, or Tibetan, 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 Tibetan? I don't know, plateau, and the Himalayas. It inhabits temperature, uh, temperate and boreal forests um, up to an elevation of 5.5 thousand meters. That's pretty freaking high. We don't even have that high of a mountain here in uh, Central Europe. That's crazy. Despite its wide distribution, it threatens by habitat loss and fragmentation, poaching, and uh, depletion of prey. Conservation efforts have been made through the extensive illegalization of lynx hunting across the territories where the species is observed. You can see the conservation status down here, as you can see. Um, is that way and um, they are still threatened and um, yeah this is how it looks you can see there are a few more in this habitat uh, if uh, if you're wondering um, I just took a few more just to make sure that we do see some animals and I can uh, test some of the fur variants because there are some fur variants in here let me just go down there's is there anyone sleeping yeah that's that's a brilliant one this is the uh, fully gray one let's have a look you are such a beautiful animal. Oh my goodness me, look at that one. Nick has done an outstanding job on this one. Really cool with the ears and you know, um, it, it you know it took a while until they got the fur shader to work properly, but this fur shader uh, suits this animal absolutely well. And now if we go out, uh, where's another one? Let's have a look for another one. There's one very slight gray uh, beige-ish one. That one is also looking pretty cool. I think it's that one down there. Um, but there you go, this is now a jump happening. Uh, wait a second. Ooh, there's the autosave. There you go. Oh, it's just dancing for us. Are you just dancing for us? Might be, right? 
Look at that with the fur and stuff. I really think this looks fantastic. And then we should get another one over here. This one is pooping for us. Nice. Um, <laughs> just kidding. Where's the other one? Is it this one? Oh, yes. This is that one. Look, this is not as um, colorful. This is a little bit more um, beige or yeah, less saturated. I'm, I'm not sure what kind of uh, color this is. The tint is definitely different. Um, has some scars in there, but you know, um, that's how it is fighting with the others in here. And then the actually shorter tail than you would expect it to be. Um, very fuzzy, very, you know, um, that's so cool. That's so cool. I think it really fits well in here in Yosemite. And if you can see, you know, this is a beautiful look from, from over here to Half Dome. Uh, really loving the view over here. And I made the water also pretty pretty bluish with the new color option. Uh, we can make that a little bit more bluish. So it looks really decent, really good stuff, I guess. But yeah, if we zoom out a little bit so you can see the context in where it is, I think it fits now very, very well in. We do have the big cat house over here. Um, and then we do actually have this entire area is more or less like for the colder areas. And I think it's very nice because it's pretty close to the mountain. Um, it, it has some uh, feel from mountains and stuff. I think it really does fit well in here. And, you know, with the coldness and stuff uh, and, and, and snow um, that, you know, in the winter times that works very well with the mountain over here. Whilst the other ones have a bit more of a plain area here with the lions and with the cheetahs. Uh, I think that really, really works well. We could actually, I haven't tested that yet, but we could actually try to see what happens if we change the color of this area. I haven't, I haven't done that. Like, oh my god, no. I, I think I think we don't want to have this color. Okay, this is like, <laughs> it's just funny what you can actually do with it. Um, I do have to say though that the natural color looked pretty pretty good on here. Maybe we can find a better one, like in between green, darker green, something like that. I don't know, what would be the color of a, of a river here in Yosemite? I actually have no clue. I think I have to look some up some images. I think it would be way more bluish though. And then uh, the opacity. Yeah, not sure if I'm going to keep that. I just leave it as it is right now. Uh, maybe we find a better version. I'm, I'm not sure. Like, if we if we go down here. It looks kind of realistic, but it doesn't really... It looks a bit more murky than it should. I don't know. I will have a look into some photos of, of Yosemite to see what the water looks like over there. Uh, because I'm really not sure. Uh, what we definitely can do over here, though, is... Let me just quickly fix that with the penguins. Um, I definitely want to have... Wait, wait, wait. wait just give me the water. Uh, can I have the water, please? Okay, let me just check that water like this then. Let me just, there you go. This is the water volume. I definitely want to make that like crystal clear blue water. There you go. And then we just do get a lot less transparency. There you go. This is this is the stuff we want. This is the stuff we want. That makes this, this area way better. Like we have a lot more clean water. That looks a lot better um, with everything way more visible to here. You can see them diving a lot better. Yes, that's what we want. Is it still super crowded? Oh my god, it's actually super crowded. But I do have to say though, that when you leave the game running for a bit, the performance is definitely really good. Like, not sure why it is, but it's definitely still very doable. Uh, I, I do have to say that the color works pretty well over here. That, like, looks kind of good. But yeah, let's go back to the Lynx Habitat for the end of today's episode. So this is the Lynx Habitat again. Um, as I just said, we will have some more modded animals in the future. Um, I won't promise when and how much and whatnot. It will be just, you know, I will just mix it in just as a normal animal if I want to. Um, if there's something crazy breakthrough, we will definitely do it. But I'm, I'm not just like going to show you each and every mod. I will use them in my projects. I will use them just as animals. I really hope you guys enjoyed this episode today. Please let me know your feedback about modding in the comments down below. What is your stance on it? How do you like the fact that I'm starting with modding now? And also, what is your favorite mod in case you have already looked into it? I would also highly recommend to keep it polite and friendly. We all know that modding is just very supportive from the people who want to do it, but please also... Oh my, oh my goodness, have you seen that? That looked fantastic. Wait a second, sorry, I was interrupted by my outro of that insanely nice climbing over here. Honestly, that looked really good. 
that looked really cool. Anyhow, okay, um, so uh, please stay polite, you know, um, everyone wants just to be supportive and uh, there are reasons why modding um, is still a little bit of a problematic thing, not gonna lie, it's um, in, in terms of legal stuff, but um, I think we've talked about that enough and uh, I, I want to just reinforce, please stay polite, nice and friendly, uh, be supportive to each other. If you want to do mods, there are uh, definitely people who want to help you installing them and stuff like that. So please keep it friendly um, and let's uh, all work for the best possible game out there with mods, with the animal existing and obviously with the great additions that Frontier do. Uh, hopefully also in the future with some more cool new additions just like the diving mechanics and stuff like that. I am really looking forward to that and I really hope you enjoy today's episode. Thank you guys so much for your ongoing support. I talk to you in the next one. Stay safe and goodbye.